function point analysis or function based metrics now you see here allen mr allen he developed this function point analysis in 1979 at ibm and this was further modified by international function points users group now this fpa is used to employed to make estimate of the software project including its testing in terms of functionality or the function size of the software product so the cost schedule and effort can be computed as i said this function point analysis may be used for the test estimation of the product also so this function point analysis this is going to give you a solution about the size of the solution it can give you the cost the schedule the effort which is employed which has to be employed and the important part is it is independent of any kind of programming language it is independent of any programming language so it helps in estimation of testing projects also and since you have all these numbers now you can have a better idea to discuss it with your say stakeholders now there are different parts you see here and you will be able to understand in a short while how does this function based metric or function point analysis work these are the five measurement parameter which we also called as the information domain values these all five things we need the amount of them in your product for example this is just an example of all these five values and these numbers are already empirically computed for a low kind of product or the effort wise or other parameter wise if it is low you will use 34375 if it is high 676 1510 now i'll tell you how these number are computed and then if you just want to do it for low or average or high you just have to multiply these two rows first the counts you are going to give and the row any of these any of these three low average high so what are these first information domain values measurement parameter first is the application and user is interacting with the application and there can be some external data source so the number of external inputs these are each external input originates from the user or it is transmitted from another application inputs they are often used to update the ilf which are inside here internal logical files now coming to eo this is another parameter each external output is derived data that provides information to the user so user will get the information that is the direction you see so what can it be it can be a report it can be a screen it can be error messages if you have 10 error messages you'll only compute one or just number one number of external inquiries eqs now this number of this external inquiry is is the input which gives you our software response as an output which is actually coming from the ilf what is ilf number of internal logical files so each internal logical file this is a logical grouping of data that resides with, within the boundary resides within the application boundary and is maintained via the external inputs so these are internal logical files what are external interface files or eifs each external interface file is a logical grouping of data that resides external to the application external to the application but provides data that may be of use to the application so you have an application input are coming from the user there is external data source so now we will assign a complexity value to each count that is you have certain value of these for example uh, you have how many external inputs i'm just giving you an idea okay because we'll take an example and you'll see what numbers are we infer say external input eis are 1 eeos are 2 eqs are 2 ilfs 1 eifs 1 so now this is first column now you say i have to compute regarding my functionality point as simple or average or complex so if you want to compute it as average uh, you don't have to worry about the first and third row so 4 into 1 2 into 5 
2 into 4, I am multiplying the first with the, uh, the average room. Then 1 into 7 is 7. Now we are going to add them up, summing. So when we add this, 10 and 10 is 20, 8 and 7 is 15, 15 plus 20 is 35, 35 plus 4 is 34, uh, 35, 39 I guess. Anyways, this number doesn't count. Uh, we'll take a proper example. So what we are going to do here is, if this number is 34 or 39, eventually it will be some number and that will be called as count total. This number 34 or 39, whichever number is there, the count total. And then we'll multiply it with 0 0.65 plus 0 0.01 into sigma fi. Now count total is computed. What is sigma fi? The sigma fi will be computed like this. Sigma fi will be, see, we have 14 parameters here or 15 general system characteristics. So these are value adjustment factor VAF based on the responses to these questions. For example, data communication is required, reusability is required, online data is required. But what is the say complexity? That is, we'll give number from 0 to 5. 0, that means we don't require it, it has no influence. But 5, yes, it is very important. 0 means not important, 5 is absolutely essential. So any number between 0 and 5 can be assigned to all these 14. For example, data communication is very important, 5. Online update not required, zero reusability somewhat, so gave one. So we gave all these 14 values, some value between zero and five. And then all, all values you have to add. The number between zero to five you have given, you have to add them. So when you add them, what do you get? This is sigma fi, whichever number comes. As I said, 34, 39 or this is sigma fi, whichever number it comes. And you just put it here, that will be the functional point. In the function based matrix, this is an example. We want to use the function point metric. And this is a simple flow diagram for a user interaction function in say a safety security safe home system. So there is a hardware where when you, whether you are going to key in and there will be a software inside it. So the function manages user interaction. What is the user interaction? For example, accepting a user password in order to activate or deactivate the system. This allows inquiries on the status of the security zones and the various security sensors, whether they are working, not, my parking is safe or not, whether my kitchen sensor is working, and then displaying of or so display of some prompting messages. Also sending some appropriate control signal to various components of the security system. So these are the function managing the user interaction. But our idea is to compute the function point. So what are the three external inputs? We need to find out EIs. What are EIs, external inputs? So what are the inputs? Password is an input. The panic button is an input. External input. And the activate and deactivate is the external input. So how many are there? Three. So in front of external inputs, we are going to put under count three. Three. Okay, how, how this three has come? Now we have two external inquiries. What are these? The zone inquiry, which area we are talking about and which sensor we are talking about. So sensor inquiry. These are two external inquiries. So in place of EI, we are going to give the two number. Then ILF. How many ILFs are there? System configuration file. So we have one ILF. So let us give ILF as one. Two external outputs are there. So these are messages which are going outside and sensor status. So these are two external outputs being given. So we'll put external outputs as two. Now what are EIFs, the external interface files? For example, your test sensor, zone setting, activate, de deactivate, whether it is not done or not, what is the test status and the alarm alert. These are external interface files. So we'll put four here. Now we have a count for each of these input parameters. Now we need count total. So let us assume that it is simple. We are putting the weighing factor for simple and these numbers are empirically already found and these are specific to certain application. So average, complex, these are already, already empirically predetermined value. So we are not taking average and complex right now. We are just saying that, okay, let us use, use it for a simple functionality. 
Okay, so we will not use the last two columns. Now we have to multiply the first two columns one by one. 3 into 3 is 9, 2 into 4 is 8, 2 into 3 is 6, 1 into 7 is 7, 4 into 5 is 20. Now we'll add them. Summation 50. 50 is our count total. This is our count total. Okay, we need to go for sigma fi. So let us say that it is 46 for a moderately complex product. But I need to tell you how the six sigma fi has come. So these are all the general system characteristics. Now you have to give a value from 0 to 5 depending upon the importance of these system characteristics in your software or a product in terms of usability. For example, data communication you give 2, online data entry give four, 5, usability 0. So every number you have to give between 0 and 5 and just add them. And just assume that that number is 46. You can try with any other number 40, 50, it will be below 70. Okay. So now uh, this addition of these numbers, each number between 0 to 5 assigned to these 14 system characteristics, you add them and I am just saying that it is 46 to make our computation easy. So this is 50. This is how much? This is 46 by adding all these. And then the final computation. 50 is the total count, 46 is the sigma fi and the actual function, functional point is 56. 56. Now the thing is why it is important? What do we infer from it? Our idea is not for computation. What do we do? So based on the projected for this function point value which is derived from the requirement model, now the project team can estimate the overall implemented size of the safe home user interaction function. Just assume that past history of this kind of project has given us that one function point translate into 60 line of code if we use the object oriented language. So how many function point are here? 56. And one function point gives six, 60 lines of code. So 60 into 56, this will be the number of line of code. So this is the line of code estimation. For example, 12 function points are produced for each person month of effort. So effort is known 12 FPs, what will be 56, how many person month, so just divide 56 by 12, this is, you will get the answer for the effort. So line of code you got, the effort you got. Now just assume that the past project, it was found that the average of 3 errors per function is found during the requirement and design review. So for each, each function, there, function point there are 3. So you can assume there are 56 uh, function point. The there are four function error per uh, per function point during unit and integration. So four you are getting. So 56 are here. 56 into four. So you know about the number of errors per function point, and function point is known. So the the line of code is known. Effort is known. Number of errors are known. So this kind of data help you assess the completeness of a review. Review also the testing activities. Okay, how much code you have written, what effort you have to put and the review and testing activities. That is why this function based matrix is so important.